Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to talk about absolute value equations and we're going to work our way through the second uh, homework assignment from that section. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we have negative 8p inside absolute value is equal to 64, so because this absolute value is by itself, we're going to split it and rewrite it. So we're going to write negative 8p is equal to 64, and then negative 8p is equal to negative 64. We're going to go ahead and solve this. So let's get p by itself by getting rid of that coefficient by dividing both sides by negative 8. And p would be equal to negative 8. And here we're going to do the exact same step. We're going to divide both sides by our coefficient, which in this case is negative 8. And p would be equal to positive 8. So our answer is both negative 8 and positive 8. Okay, let's check this out. So we have v plus 3 absolute value of v plus 3 equals 2. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and rewrite this. So v plus 3 equals 2. v plus 3 equals negative 2. Let's go ahead and solve that. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We're going to use the inverse operation. And v would be equal to negative 1. We're going to do the same thing over here. So negative 3, negative 3. Negative 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 5. And so our two answers are negative 1 and negative 5. Okay. Number five, we have the absolute value of n minus five over three. So we have to get rid of that three. So we're going to multiply both sides by three since it's in the denominator. It's not inside the absolute value, so that means we can do this. So absolute value of n minus five equals three, because three times one is three. And now we can split this and rewrite it. So n minus five equals three, and n minus five equals negative three. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get n by itself by adding 5 to both sides. <clears throat> so n would be equal to 8, because 3 plus 5 is 8. And over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 5 to both sides. And negative 3 plus 5 would be 2. So n is equal to 2. Okay. We have negative 1 plus the absolute value of m plus 5 equals 5. Again, we want to get the absolute value by itself. So we're going to get rid of this 1 that's on the outside of the absolute value. And that's going to give us absolute value of m plus 5 equals 6. We're going to split this and rewrite it. m plus 5 equals 6. m plus 5 equals negative 6. Let's go ahead and solve for m. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides. We're going to use the inverse operation, which is subtraction in this case. So m would be equal to 1. And here we're going to subtract 5 again. And negative 6 minus 5 would give us a negative 11. And those are our two answers. Okay. All right, number 9. <clears throat> we have this 7 here, this pesky 7. We're going to get rid of that. So we're going to use the inverse operation. Which is the so the absolute value of 2 plus 3v equals 2, because 9 take away 7 is 2. And then we're going to split this and rewrite it. So 2 plus 3v equals 2, and then 2 plus 3v equals negative 2. Okay. All right, we have a two-step equation here. We're going to get rid of our constant first, so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, and then 2 minus 2 is 0, so 3v equals 0. Divide both sides by 3, that's our coefficient, and 3, sorry, 0 divided by 3, rather, is 0. Okay. Let's see what happens over here. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. We're going to be given 3v equals negative 4. Divide both sides by our coefficient. And that is going to give us <coughs> v is equal to negative 4 thirds. And that's it. So those are our two answers. So in the last two problems, number 11, similar to the last two, we have to add 4 to both sides because this is a negative 4. So we're going to plus 4, plus 4. Okay. So the absolute value of 1 plus 5p equals 46. We're going to split this and rewrite it. So 1 plus 5p equals 46. And 1 plus 5p equals negative 46. Let's go ahead and get p by itself. So we're going to get rid of our constant. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. 5p is equal to 45. And let's divide both sides by our coefficient. My fingers aren't working because it's so cold <laughs> in this room. Oh, boy. Divide by 5, that's our coefficient. And p would be equal to 9. Okay. 
it is cold. Wow, my fingers are freezing. Um, <clears throat> thought I'd share that. Let's subtract one from both sides. So negative 46 minus 1 is negative 47. So we have 5 p equals negative 47. Let's divide by our coefficient, which is 5. And p would be equal to, we could keep it as negative 47 over 5, or we could convert that from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Let's go ahead and turn that into a mixed number. So 5 divides 47 9 times. That's going to be negative, because negative divided by positive is negative. So negative 9 with a remainder of 2, because 5 times 9 is 45. Yeah, it's a remainder of 2, so 2 fifths. So p equals negative 9 and 2 fifths. OK, the last two. Uh, <clears throat> so this is an interesting one. We have 8 times the absolute value of 2 plus 3n equal, sorry, minus 2 equals 86. Now, many of you may be tempted to distribute this 8. You cannot do so. You can, well, you could, but it wouldn't be math, all right? It would be bad math, I guess. So you don't want to do that because you can't. Um, you do have to get rid of that 8, <clears throat> but it's easier to get rid of 2 first. So let's do that. We're going to add 2 to both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. 8, and then the absolute value of 2 plus 3n equals, what's that, 88? Okay, now you can think of this as 8 times the absolute value because it's right next to it, right? And the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to use an inverse operation, which is division. We're going to divide both sides by 8. That'll make that 8 go away. And we're going to get the absolute value of 2 plus 3n equals 11. And now we can solve this. So 2 plus 3n equals 11. 2 plus 3n equals negative 11, and now we can go ahead and solve this two-step equation. We're going to subtract 2 because that's our constant. And 3n would equal 9. We're going to divide both sides by 3. And n will be equal to 3. Here, we're going to do the exact same steps. So subtract 2 from both sides. And 3n would be equal to, well, let's see, negative 11 minus 2 would be negative 13. And divide both sides by 3. Okay, n will be equal to negative 3 over 13. Let's just convert that to a mixed number. Why not? 3 divides 13 four times. It's going to be negative because negative divided by positive negative. So 4 times 3 is 12 with a remainder of 1. Okay, so negative 4 and a third. Although if you were to plug this back into check, it would be far easier to keep it as the improper fraction when solving it, to be honest. So 3 and then negative 4 and 1 third. Okay, last one. Here we go. Negative absolute value n plus m minus 4 equals negative 11. So again, this negative sign actually represents the number negative 1. So if you want to, you can go ahead and write negative 1 there if you want. Some students like to do that. I, I don't, but some people do. Let's get rid of the 4 first. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. So we're going to have negative absolute value and 9 plus m equals negative 7. Yep. Negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. We're going to get rid of that negative sign. Again, that's a negative 1. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. And that'll get rid of it. So absolute value of n9, I want to call that n, I don't know why. Absolute value of 9 plus m equals positive 7. And then we're going to split that and rewrite it because that's by itself. So we're going to write 9 plus m equals 7. And then 9 plus m equals negative 7. Let's go ahead and solve that. Let's get rid of the 9. So we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. And m would be equal to negative 2. And let's do it here. Subtract 9, subtract 9. Negative 7 minus 9 would be negative 16. Okay. Okay, so those are all the odds for that worksheet. If you still have any issues, most of you have gone through this already and done it, but I figured it'd, it'd, it'd be worthwhile posting this anyway. So please let me know if you have any questions on this. All right, thanks, guys.